Well, hello world, welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs, and today I want to share my list for Christmas for the budding musician, music producer in your family. If you're looking at what to get somebody who's trying to get into music production, then this is the right video for you. So we're gonna start with computer. Assuming they don't have a computer, I know it's kind of hard to imagine these days, I'm gonna recommend the Mac Mini, and it's the lowest priced one. It's $500. It has the M2 chip. This one only has 256 gigs of storage, but you can buy an external SSD from Samsung for like $100 and you'll be able to save all your projects and things like that to that SSD. And you can upgrade the Mac Mini to a higher storage, but if you're trying to save money and it's a beginner, then maybe you want to do this. Um, they do have another model that's a pro version and that's I think twelve to thirteen hundred dollars. I will leave links in the description down below. They are affiliate links, so they won't cost you anything extra, but it will help my channel out. So I appreciate it if you use those. I would also recommend you using Logic Pro if you get the Mac because it's two hundred dollars. All the updates are free. You own it forever as long as you have a Mac. So Logic Pro Mac Mini. So next I wanna talk about audio interfaces. If you know nothing about music production and you're here just to find stuff for a family member, then I'm going to tell you the audio interface is important because that's how you get sound into the computer and how you get sound out of the computer. You can hook up a microphone to it, a guitar to it, a keyboard to it, hook your speakers up to it and your headphones. I have three different interfaces all different prices but roughly in the same ballpark and they're all two channel interfaces so the first one I'm recommending is the lowest price one is the UA Volt it's on sale it's $160 right now let's see it has these inputs in here are called multi jack so that means you can put a microphone or a guitar into it and it'll know what to do with the signal or you can put in a line input like from a synthesizer so it's very convenient and then here you have for your headphones and for your speakers and all that stuff. Th these buttons are just to make things sound like old records and stuff like that. And then you can press this button if you have an instrument plugged into that front jack. Okay, and then here is to provide power if you have a large condenser microphone. On the back panel, it has MIDI in and out. And then here's where you'll connect speakers to and your power and your USB-C is what you'll connect to the Mac Mini. All right, so this is a very capable interface to use. So the next price up is the Audient ID4. It's similar in its uh, ins and outs. There is some slight differences, but it also uses USB-C. You have your guitar input right here, and then you have two different headphone outs. One's a quarter inch, one is a smaller 3.5 millimeter, the kind that you would use with a phone when they still had them. On the back, you have your mic or line input. It's a combo jack as well, but this is just for a mic or a line input. No guitar goes there. The guitar goes in the front. And then you just have these two outs right here for your speakers and there's no MIDI. It's not that big of a deal if an interface doesn't have MIDI because a lot of times these days MIDI can be transmitted over USB as well. So the next interface that I'm recommending is the SSL 2 Plus audio interface and it is $250. This one has two headphone outs that are independent. If you're recording with somebody else, they can have their own headphone uh, volume and you can have your own headphone volume. So it's very helpful for that. And then you have your monitor mix so you can send a, a different mix to your monitors than what you're sending to the headphones, which is very, very forward thinking for such a small little interface. So with this one on the front panel, you have your 48 volts of phantom power for your large condenser microphones. You have a line input and a high Z input, and they're all switchable because it's combo jacks on the back. So all of these interfaces have combo jacks, which is very useful. And then you have your gain here for your microphone or your guitar. And then this 4K switch is another kind of vintage switch. So the Universal Audio had the same thing, had a vintage button, uh, can be pleasing for certain sources. So on the back panel, you have your USB-C, you have MIDI in and out, you have 
A and B for your headphones. So that's where you would plug in two different sets of headphones. And then you have three and four, and I think that is so you can send a different mix to the headphones than you're sending to your speakers, which can be useful for certain scenarios. And then you have your quarter inch jacks for your speakers. And this other one here is in case you have speakers that use the RCA coaxial type of cabling. And then you have your combo jacks, and these are your inputs where the microphones, guitars, and line inputs go. So this is much more capable, I think, and has a few bells and whistles that the others don't. So now we're gonna check out monitors, and there's three here. We have three different prices. So we have Mackie's that are $79, and my wife has a pair of these, and they work just great for what we're using them for. She likes to practice her bass using these speakers. They're small, they're not in the way. They're loud enough, they do a good job. They're not going to be the highest grade studio monitors, but they do the, they do the job, and they're only $80, so it's kind of a no-brainer for a beginner. And then the next one, we have these Presonus 3.5s, and I use these where my video editing station is. They're only 3.5 inch speakers, but if you're in a bedroom, you don't want very loud speakers anyway because you, your room won't be set up for big loud speakers. You, you just need nice small speakers are perfect for a beginner. These are $100. And then the next one up is the same speaker, but this has Bluetooth. Why you would want Bluetooth is, say you're recording with a friend and they come over and they have music on their phone, they can connect to your speakers via Bluetooth and play back whatever it is they want you to hear. And it could be very useful while you're trying to get things, you know, trying to get on the same page while you're working with somebody. So it's not necessary, but it could be very useful. And again, I am going to leave links to all this in the, in the description below. Feel free to use them. You don't have to, but it would help out the channel if you do, because they are affiliate. So now we're on to microphones, and I have three microphones up. I, I recommend the Shure SM57 because it is built like a tank, and we know kids drop stuff all the time and break things and just you know throw things around. So it's perfect for that. Um, it will last. And then on top of that, it um, can reject sound from around it so um, they can sing into it and people can be doing stuff next door and chances are it's not going to pick that up. And then on top of that, um, it's great for drums, it's great for uh, guitars, and it's, and it's actually good for vocals too. You can use these for vocals. And granted, you will want to get a pop filter if you don't know what they are. I will leave some links down below for that as well. Then this next one is the Shure Beta 57A, and this one is similar to the 57. It is a super cardioid, which means it rejects even more sound from around it. So it's directional. So it's picking up what is right in front of it. It's gonna be used in similar fashion as the Shure 57. And it's $20 more, but it's 40% off, it says right here. So that's a good deal. And then we have the Shure SM7B, which is considerably higher. It's $400, so it comes with the pop filter on it. It has EQ on the back, which is a low cut and a presence bump. It's also good for podcasts and stuff like that. So if your, your loved one is also a gamer, they might want to use this microphone for stuff like that if they stream their stuff. So it could be useful for all that kind of stuff. This microphone, the Shure SM7B, is very similar in the sound of the Shure 57. It's not a must-have, but it's a nice-to-have. Also, Amazon has their own boom stands. You will need a boom stand because these are not microphones that are meant to be handheld, meaning they will pick up noise. Um, so you want them to be on a stand. They have a stand that's $33. I can't vouch for the stand because I don't have an Amazon stand. It has 17,000 reviews on it, so you can check out the reviews. So now we are on the headphones. I only have one recommendation. That's the Sennheiser Professional HD 280 Pro. You will need headphones if you are doing vocal tracking because if you have the music coming out of the speakers, it's gonna get picked up by the microphone and it's not gonna sound good in the track. Um, there's tricks to 
do it that way, but for beginners, I wouldn't recommend that. I have four pairs in the studio right now that I use for tracking people. And the good thing about them is they're closed back, which means they will keep the sound over your ears and not bleeding into the microphone. So that's what you want. They're reasonably priced and compared to a lot of the other headphones out there and they work. So I will have this other link down there as well. The only difference here is that it's coming with a 10 foot microphone cable. And that way, if you're getting a microphone, you can just buy this bundled with the headphones and maybe save a few dollars. So the last thing on the list is really dependent on what type of music they're producing or getting into, but most people are gonna need a MIDI keyboard. And a MIDI keyboard is just how you play sound. So you have software inside the computer, a virtual keyboard or synthesizer, and this is how you're gonna be able to play it. You can do it on your keyboard, but that's not very natural for people. So this one I actually have in my studio and I travel with it. So if I ever go out of town, I can bring my laptop in this and still be able to create music in downtime or stuff like that. Now, if they're a piano player and they are advanced in how they play, then uh, I would recommend this M Audio. It's 49 keys compared to this Akai, which is only 25 keys. So this way they'd be able to play their rhythm and their lead and have all the keys available. There's bigger ones if you want, but these are ones that I'm recommending for beginners. And I've had something like this from M Audio and it always has worked very well and $120 is a good price for all that you get with this keyboard. You have 49 keys, they're weighted, you have uh, assignable controls. So once people get into MIDI and controlling the software synthesizers, then they're gonna wanna have the ability to control those synthesizers in different ways than just playing the notes. Okay, so that's usually for expression. So that's my pick for the bedroom studio producer in your household. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I do check my comments quite often. So hopefully this was useful to you. If it was, hit the like, hit the share so other people will see it. And please use the uh, affiliate links if you can. That would help the channel out greatly. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.